but thanks for the invitation. And, um, okay, so of course I'll be talking about Pan Bay equations, but I'll start just by uh, telling you <coughs> maybe less about Pan Bay equations than I would normally, since you've probably heard about them before being here and uh, knowing Ron. Um, but, uh, but those are those are the Pan Bay equations. There's or okay, maybe by the Pan Bay equations, some people mean something with slightly different coefficients where you do some invertible change of <coughs> variables and get something that looks slightly different. But um, but these they come in six six families of equations, although the first one is not much of a family, it's just a single equation. And <coughs> we'll think about the um, the alpha, beta, gamma, all of the Greek letters, these you can assume are complex numbers, although it's, it's really only important that you think about them as constants with respect to the derivation. And in that way, the, the derivation is just d by dt. So these are all second order, um, well, rather nonlinear differential equations of this particular form. So you can write the second derivative of the variable um, as, a, as a rational function in the, in the earlier derivatives. Okay, and, there, and maybe the only salient point about this that I'll make is that, about the actual equations, is that they're very, I mean, they're rather complicated. And um, if you try to solve, I mean, if you try to attack certain natural problems directly um, with pan Bay equations, things get complicated very quickly. And so I think a more theoretical approach is usually, uh, usually works out better. OK, <clears throat> and so why study these equations is the first question. I'm sure you've seen, um, I'm sure you've heard Ronnie say things like this before, but they were isolated sometime at the beginning of uh, the beginning of the last century, or maybe a little before, a little after, by Pan LeVay and people associated with him. Um, and there, the ODEs of the form y double prime is a rational function of the earlier derivatives and the variable t. The derivation, again, is d by dt, which have this pan levay property, which is some purely analytical type property. So if you have a solution in a small little ball, um, some open set, say, um, at least where it makes sense. So it doesn't make sense to, to in, some, in some ways, it doesn't make sense to try to ask for a solution where, say, the denominators of the coefficients of your equation vanish. That's what I mean by singularities, very simply. Okay. So wherever the denominators of the coefficients, which are functions of t, vanish, it, maybe it doesn't make sense to ask for solutions there. But everywhere else, if you take some local solution, you can extend it in a very powerful way to a global solution. Okay. All right. So maybe you're not so interested in that property, and that's fine, because there are a lot of other reasons um, to study pan levay equations, which won't be the sub... I mean, the reasons why won't be the subject of this talk, but there are, there are a lot. Um, so I give some examples there where pan levay equations appear. I think it's safe to say that interest in pan levay equations has been increasing um, maybe pretty steadily since at least the 1970s or so. Um, okay, so for instance, maybe you, you know what most of these things are. Markov triples are just integral solutions to a, a very particular a very particular uh, polynomial equation in three variables. Uh, let's see, I forget the coefficient. And somehow, integer solutions to this equation are very closely tied to certain problems in Diophantine approximation. And they're also somehow very closely tied to solutions of pan levay 6. Okay, so I won't say anything more about that, but you can look at papers of Peter Sarnak if you want to find out. Um, <clears throat> okay, so 
Panlovet conjectured, and I won't <coughs> explain exactly what irreducible means, um, and maybe even claim to prove, and, and other people probably claim to prove that the Panlovet equations were irreducible. Um, it wasn't so clear that he had a rigorous definition of this, although people later made rigorous definitions of irreducible. Um, but I'll explain things you know, just in, in modern terms. And I'm just going to say that irreducibility is related to the model theoretic notion of strong minimality. And um, really rigorous, so a rigorous um, definitions of the sort of things Panlevé was after were really pursued by, um, by in, the, in the 80s and 90s by mathematicians in the Japanese school of differential algebra. So, um, okay, so I'm, I'm not sure uh, of an exhaustive list who, of people who claimed things about transcendence of Panlevé equations. I think that there were a lot of claims over the years and a fair number of incorrect proofs. But <clears throat> eventually, Groups of Japanese mathematicians um, attacked, in a really extensive literature, attacked the Panlevé equations and, and proved a rigorous version of what Panlevé was, was claiming. And so, um, okay, and we'll, I'll explain exactly what, what, what I mean by irreducible, um, more or less, in the, in the, in the coming slides. So, um, so following this, they, they also wanted to understand. So somehow, this irreducibility notion is, uh, has to do with uh, the, the transcendence of, Panlevé, of solutions to Panlevé equations. And um, they also turned their, eventually their attention to understanding the possible algebraic relations that could hold between solutions of a fixed Panlevé equation, and a little bit between, um, you know, between different uh, equations in the same family. And the second, the second sort of project stalled out, I think, because, um, because things get very complicated very fast. But for instance, Nishioka um, proved that for Panlevé 1, um, there can be no algebraic relations between the solutions. So, um, Okay, so they, they were pursuing that, but it gets very complicated, and um, their approach was uh, sort of um, really technical. Okay. So <clears throat> a few years later, I guess maybe, well, an, you know, more than a decade later, uh, Ronnie and Anand used many of these results from the Japanese school, and um, and basically pushed their result, results much, much farther, especially with regard to understanding the algebraic relations that might hold between a Panlevé equation, the possible algebraic relations. And so here's, here's sort of the, the central, or what I regard at least as the central motivating um, question of, of Anand and Rani's papers. Um, so does the following equation holds. So here I'm computing the transcendence degree over, so I'm working always over the field of rational functions, C of T, and Y1 through Yn are some solutions to some Panlevé equation. Okay? And we know that the, the answer to the question, for various reasons which we'll get into, we know that the answer to the question can't always be yes. So the first question that you ask is, well, is it somehow true that generically the solutions of this Panlevé equation are sort of just as transcendental as they might possibly be. That no algebraic relations can hold between them. I mean, notice this is like <laughs> diametrically opposed to the situation where you take solutions to something like a linear differential equation, where you could have you know, whatever sort of algebraic relations you want. Almost. So this is the opposite behavior of that. What's the sense of gen uh, genericity? Is yeah, it's a good question. I should have said that. So there are parameters to each of the Panlevé families. And so regardless of which family I'm working in, by transcendental, we just mean in the sense of, um, in the sense of algebraic geometry. So we mean transcendental number over Q. 
Okay. And when show the, the famous again my book. Yeah. Show I'm sorry? The, the equations again. Yes, certainly. So let's let's go back towards the beginning and, and, and I think that will actually help the explanation of this. So each of the families of equations, there are six <coughs> family, six families of equations, and let's forget about P1 because there's no parameter. The Greek letters are all complex numbers. And what we mean when we say that when we say that alpha is generic, is just that it's a transcendental number, not algebraic over Q, okay? And what we mean when we say a generic, uh, that this uh, four tuple is generic, is that they're all transcendental numbers and they're not inter-algebraic over Q, okay? So they're just, say, a generic point in affine four space, a generic point in affine two space, et cetera. Is it clear what I mean? That's what we mean by generic. And, though, and that's what we mean by the parameters as well. And uh, is this the, you know, uh, uh, as good as it can be, or...? Uh... Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. That's really uh, central to the talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first, so as a first step, what, what Anand and Rani proved was, um, was a weak form of that, of that result. So. Um, so proving something like this, again, I mean, just to emphasize, it's really complicated because the, the individual equation, the individual parameters, the, the, the y1 through yn that you're studying, they satisfy some very complicated nonlinear equation. So as soon as you, say, want to prove that a certain algebraic relation just can't hold, well, if you do it directly, you just have to, you have to you, maybe you think about differentiating, and then applying that relation, but that relation is really complicated, and so things blow up really quickly. And so, um, and so, well, some theory comes into play, which makes this a lot more doable, I think. Um, okay, so the first thing that Anand and Rani proved was something called geometric triviality. Okay, it, so it turns out that the, the Japanese school had, in completely different language, proved that the solution set to a pan equation with generic parameters is strongly minimal. That means, in this context, precisely that the only differential subvarieties that could exist over any differential field are points or the whole variety. No order one equations can be a differential subvariety. Okay? That's exactly all that strongly minimal strong minimality means in this context. So if you don't know what it means, now you do. Okay, so the Japanese school in completely different language had really proved strong minimality. It's called Umumura's condition J. Okay. And, um, and, well, here's what, in this context, a model theoretic notion called geometric triviality. Sometimes we just call this triviality, but I don't know, that's, it's dangerous because so many things are called trivial in math. Um, Disintegrated. Okay. Well, some people think that disintegrated means something different. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that it means something stronger than just triviality. And, I mean, I don't think that, but some people do. Um, I've been told that. Okay, so what it means is that if this, if this question that, that really I think you should regard as the motivational force behind what Anand and Rani did, if the answer to that question is no, if that equation doesn't hold, then already it has to be the case that it doesn't hold on two of the, of the points, okay? So again, this is, just like, this is exactly the opposite kind of behavior that you would have from, say, a linear differential equation, where you know, once you fix a fundamental set of solutions, it has a vector space structure, and you might have a linear relation, which is, which is longer, which is a linear dependency between more than two things, okay, but not between two things. So, so this is not usually true for, for you know, sort of nice differential equations, but, but for nonlinear equations, we have a lot of reasons to believe that this kind of behavior is ubiquitous. So, Anand and Rani established um, geometric triviality first. Is this for every pair or just for some pair? Um, I J. If it fails for the so, thing, then it fails for some pair. Yeah, yeah. So we're saying, yeah. Sorry. So, 
So a strongly minimal <coughs> set is geometrically trivial if whenever this equation does not hold, then this inequality must be the reason why. This inequality must hold for well, some for some case. Yeah. Okay. And it turns out that it's not so obvious, but um, uh, it's not so obvious, but but this this geometric triviality actually gives you a lot of tangible tools to, to attack the problem, attack the full conjecture. Because geometric triviality puts some, some big restrictions on the way in which algebraic relations might arise. Um, following in, well, rather complete generality for, for certain kinds of model theoretic settings, and of which this is one. Okay, so, um, for Penlevé 6, Anand and Rani proved something weaker, although I'm told that Rani is for Penlevé 6. And 3 as well. So I wasn't established really, but now. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so now um, there's, this has been proved for Penlevé 6, uh, but I haven't read it yet. You're, no, re you're writing it's, it's, it. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, and. Um, and for, okay, so for Penlevé 2, um, uh, Ronnie even um, proved this, not just for generic values of the parameter, but um, for all values of the parameter, as long as you weren't in this, this set, um, this coset of the integers, 1 half plus c. So, okay, so, um, <clears throat> all right. And eventually, I'm going to discuss this question of Bolch, which um, motivates some of the talk, um, and some stronger versions of uh, the Neglu-Pelay question or conjecture. I'm going to call it conjecture. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Panlevé 2 more specifically. So here's the equation Panlevé 2, in case you don't remember. Um, and we actually have a rather complete understanding of Panlevé 2 now. So, um, so G is going to be a group of transformations on the parameter space. Okay? So just uh, shifting by 1, shifting by minus 1, and taking alpha to minus alpha. Okay? So it's like the group generated there is like um, Z semi-direct product with Z mod 2Z or something like that. Okay, but you don't have to think of those terms. Um, Okay, so then for any transformation in that group generated by G, we get the following commutative diagram. <coughs> okay. So, uh, on the parameter space, and there's a corresponding birational bijection between the fibers of Panlevé 2. Okay, so, um, so here maybe you start with, with pi, and maybe tau is x goes to x plus 1, so here's pi plus 1. And here you have Panlevé 2 of pi, and here you have Panlevé 2 of pi plus 1. And there's a bijection between those differential equations, which is given by a, a rational function in the variable. Okay? So, and these kinds of, these uh, transformations are, uh, they're classically known, and they're, they're a huge part of what the Japanese school used to prove their transcendence results. They're called well, we call them Bachlin transformations. And, and maybe in model theoretic terms, well, this means this is a strong form or, or a very particular form of saying that P2 of alpha and P2 of beta are non-orthogonal. So we say something like that. That's a, this is a very specific instance of that notion. And of course, non-orthogonality is something that we study all the time. Um, okay, and for the other Panlevé equations, I'm not going to go through all of the transformation groups for those equations, but they're similar, uh, they're, they're more complicated, uh, I mean, until you get to Panlevé 6, it's, uh, they just keep going up in complexity. Uh, so there's, I wrote down what is the transformation group for Panlevé 6. Um, yeah, and they're really a key part of the, the work of the Japanese school that I mentioned. Okay, and so there's this question of Bolch. Are there any Bachlin transformations between, uh, 
equations in distinct Penlevé families with generic coefficients. So the question is somehow, could you have a, a birational um, a birational bijection between Panlevé 2 of pi and Panlevé 4 of e. Could it happen? I mean, so the, that's roughly the question. Uh, yeah, Alice? Uh, so that's a question about birationality. Yeah. Is the more general non orthogonality question? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, um, or, is it, or does it immediately reduce to these backward ones? Uh, after a little bit of doing, it reduces. Okay. But yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. So, of course, the context in which Ronnie answered this question for most of the pairs was that he proved that they're, that they're orthogonal. And the context in which I'm going to uh, finish that up and prove it for the remaining two pairs that Ronnie didn't do is that I proved that they're orthogonal. So that, and, and that's a stronger condition a priori than no Bachlin transformations. Uh, so, but, yeah. so um, there is only one parameter in and only four? Yeah. No, there, there, are, there are two parameters. Right, so how, how, how <coughs> down below arrow go? Oh, OK. So we, we don't mean that there, <coughs> that there would have to be a whole group acting. We just mean, uh, yeah, so the picture is, is slightly different. It just means that could there be, um, could there be for some generic uh, value of the parameter alpha, Penlevé 2, a differential rational map to some Panlevé 4 equation. Yeah, we're not asking that, that it commutes with the group or, or does more structure than that. We're just asking whether there could be a bijection between the solution sets. Some. So you include differential rational, not just... Yeah, it could, yeah, yeah. No, You're allowed no, to have derivative? Yeah, that would be derivative. fine. Yeah. That would be fine. Oh, okay. No, but I'm... So, so the, the tau star doesn't have to be coming from tau? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that's right, because... Oh, okay. Because they're they're because the <laughs> the base of the diagram are different things, so it wouldn't make sense to, to try to enforce them. Okay, so so what do you mean by backward transformation then? Okay, uh, I just mean Bachlin transformation in the sense that it's a that it's a um, a, bi, a differential birational map, okay. say, and usually over C of t. Yeah, d oh, yeah, usually over oh. C of t, although. The results that we prove, of course, are very insensitive to, to the base field. And the derivative uh, is zero? Uh, on C? Yeah. On, yeah. on C, yes. Yes, on C. It's D by DT. On C. On C. Oh, on C, yeah. yes. So, so the Beckland transformations of C or C squared, whatever, induce a differential rational transformations of the solution space? Set? Yes. Oh, okay. that's right. Who yeah. proved that? Well, this is this is part of the work of the Japanese school. I mean, so this is an yeah. There's an incredibly big literature in which they develop this in extensive detail. When when you are looking at different families, mm -hmm. if the parameter space for one family is c and the parameter space for mm -hmm. another family is c squared, mm -hmm. uh, tau no longer. Yeah, yeah, there's no tau, yeah, there's no tau, right, it's just, yeah, you, for you, just think, it, we're proving, we're proving orthogonality, yeah, there's, yeah, so sorry. It doesn't have to be a tau. And then solutions space, solutions live in the same space no matter which equation. That's right, because the, because each of the families is an equation of the form y double prime equals something, so you can just think of it as living in one space. All right, so. So the question is, what about the remaining question of, of remaining cases of Bolch's conjecture? Well, we'll get to those. But first, I, I want to I want to suggest um, an, an even I think an even more general program of study for this, which I think that differential algebra will contribute to in the coming years. Um, so here's a, a separate question. A priori, but but one which really, once you start, once you put it in a in, in a common context, um, falls under the same umbrella as the first question. So, does the group G that I gave for Panlevé two give all of the instances of non-orthogonality between equations in the family P two? So, in other words, could it be that we ever have an algebraic relation between P two of seventeen? and P2 of 17 and a half. Could that ever happen? 
or not? If, it, if the answer is no, then that group gives all the instances. And if the answer is yes, somehow there could be an algebraic relation, then the answer would be no. So, yes? So, Ronnie, the result uh, about penlevé 2 and parameters not coming from z plus a half, mm -hmm. is it that both parameters need to not be there, or...? Penlevé 2 has one parameter. Yeah. 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 Right. No, no, uh, so you're looking at uh, a solution to something with parameter Bob and something with parameter mm -hmm. Alice. Uh, but Ronnie never takes them in the same class. <laughs> well, I mean, you could look you at could. them in the same family, yeah. <laughs> but we've looked on them gener generically, right? Yeah. Generically. They have to be mutually yeah. general. Okay, but there was... Um... So I, I sort of... Uh, I, I proved geometric triviality when oh, alpha you. is yeah. not there. Yeah. And this is related because okay. answering yeah. this question... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other then words, we're, show, yeah. we're asking... Yeah. You know, we're asking... Are the non-orthogonality classes of solutions of Panlevé 2 given by the quotient of C by the group G? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Could you Probably yes. Yeah. Yes. So could you explain non-orthogonality one more time? Yeah. So it just we just mean that if you take let's let's just for the purposes of the discussion fix P2 of 17 and P2 of 17 and a half. Okay. Okay. And what we mean that by these two sets being non-orthogonal is that you take a generic solution here, and you take a generic solution here, and... Uh, generic solution, not... A generic okay, solution, okay, yeah. Right, because the parameter is fixed now. Okay. That's right, yeah. A generic solution here, and a generic solution here. So P2 of 17 generic solution, P2 of 17 and a half generic solution. Then, the two solution sets are non-orthogonal if there can be an algebraic relation defined over the base field in which you're working between those two generic solutions. A, di a so, differential algebra. Only mentions only for generic solutions on each yeah. case. That's right. That's right. So really, non-orthogonality asks. So orthogonality means that the differential subvarieties of the product of p two of seventeen and p two of seventeen and a half are all very boring. Right. They're just. <laughs> That's a new you know, they're not you, that you can't have you can't have anything that is that projects dominantly onto both sets. You, 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 if you're a proper differential subvariety of of the product, you have to you have to project dominantly onto only one of them. So, so therefore, what was the quantifier in the non orthogonality when you choose generic? So they are orthogonal. Non orthogonal. Non -orthogonal. To be non orthogonal, it means that there exists a generic solution there and a generic, and a generic solution there, uh -huh. which are not mutually generic. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes. I don't know if you okay, can mention, but for P2, uh, yeah, okay. or non orthogonality boils down to background transformation. Which is yes. not, which doesn't, which well, isn't the product yeah. of subvariety. Um, so, right, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, of course. But, okay, so here's, here's the more general question. So, say that you take Y1 through Yn, distinct generic solutions um, in one of the Panlevé families. So you fix some Panlevé equations, I don't care which ones, um, modulo is small concern coming up. Um, you fix some some distinct, uh, you know, n different or maybe some of the same uh, uh, Panlevé equations in the families, and you suppose that that some conditions hold because you need something. Either the equations come from different families like Panlevé two and Panlevé three, oh. or they're in the same the same or they have the same parameters like they're both from Panlevé two of seventeen. Yeah. And you don't pick them so that they come from fibers related by Bachlin transformations. Okay. So suppose all of that, and then something else that's ugly and technical, but, but they don't come from certain fibers of Panlevé 6, then, okay, question, does the following transcendence question hold? 
these, uh, these colored assumptions, yeah. uh, are they supposed to hold for every pair of the whites? Yes. So like y1 yes. and y2, y1 yes. and y3, y1 and y4? Yeah. Yes, for so, all pairs, yeah. So what you're really doing is partitioning them by family, Yeah. and then partitioning them by parameter. That's right. That's right. And then the different partitions should be either from different families or from same family and not related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And within the same, within one partition, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And and then and not coming. Oh, Peter has a question. Yeah, what sorry. do you mean by known groups? Can't you prove any group of vector transformation? Well, okay. We 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 have some <laughs> group. We have some groups you, that you we know. Groups some classically known things which act on the parameter space and induce birational transformations of the and solutions. Those particular and the quest I mean, are those all of those such things? I mean, I, 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 no, I don't. I, I, I don't know of a result to that effect. You'll be given certain effects. groups of Beckland transformations and ask whether yeah. all of them. Are. Yeah. The, so. Okamoto and the other mathematician yeah, that from the Japanese school mentioned before came up with all of these ornate groups. Yeah. And the question is, do those groups give you all of the um, bottom yeah, of the tree? So, so who, yeah. whose question is this? This is my question. That's your question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, maybe okay. maybe with with Project hints from I mean, of course, of course, Ronnie and Anand uh, worked on something, worked on special cases of this, which Clearly suggested. Right. So, so my my guess is that there is all these conditions where you can actually prove this. Yeah. The, so these conditions are all necessary yeah. to have the okay. equation hold, and the question is just whether it's sufficient. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we know, of course, we know, of course, that these are all necessary, which is why I chose them. <laughs> um. I mean, really, these three conditions amount yeah. to if two of the y's come from the same family. Yes. Then their parameters are either identical yes. or not related by backward transformations. Yes. Oh, some of these. <coughs> yeah. Those yeah. those three those. conditions yes, mean yes, that. Yes. And then yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a fourth condition which is not colored about about not being in certain fibers of Penlevé six, and it's a complicated issue. I, I wish to not discuss. So one more question about this: mm -hmm. Who do you think would like to know the answer besides you to this question? <laughs> oh, I, I mean. I, well, would. I think Ronnie would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I think Ronnie would. But I think also that that so understanding understanding the exact algebraic relations which hold say between solutions of a fixed Panlevé equation, I mean it, it has the potential to have numerous applications in the in the same ways that that Panlevé equations are always applied. Like so, if you if you if you know somehow that Panlevé six has something to do with the monodromy of a certain linear differential equation you're studying, then to understand the solution set of Panlevé 6 ought to have consequences. I, I mean, so, I, yeah, I think that there will be tangible consequences should you be able to prove a conjecture this strong. I think proving the conjecture will be very hard. So, so my guess. For, for these, under these cases, is this condition also equivalent to the geometric uh, triviality? No, it's a stronger. It's stronger. This is stronger. Yeah, this is stronger. Um, yeah, we. Yeah, it's stronger. Um, Wait, why is it stronger? Well, um, be, because it could be geometrically trivial, but somehow have. Um, oh, this is the. Yeah, have complicated. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, so we, this is the super extra full disintegratedness. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And uh, another question I had is. To answer, yeah. to, to provide an authority that Alexei requested, would you two say that Anand would want to know the answer to this question? Oh, sure. no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, and and Bolsh, for instance. Yes. I mean, this this is a this is a big this is a generalization of a question Bolch was asking. For would uh, would Coxon uh, be interested in this? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I don't want to commit other people's interests besides ones that I feel. I mean, he, he is one of the experts, right? I, I, yeah, I, I suppose so. I, have you, have you? I haven't, I've have not discussed. Have you told us about this? I've not discussed the, this problem. Jim, no. the definition of non-orthogonal, mm -hmm. I suppose I translate that, Beckland transformation will mean differential rational level for the one. Mm -hmm. it, and um, it, it has to be dominant, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's right. We don't need by ra differentially, by rationally equivalent. Yeah, but but Just but so we know we, we yeah, actually so we so actually know that that the the stronger condition would follow from your first stipulation oh, okay. because of the particular of, nature of the solution mm -hmm. set. Yeah. yeah, in this case. 
Of course, not in general. No. So does the Japanese use differential birational? Yeah, I mean, they, they're, they're, they're I mean, no, they're studying, they're studying generally uh, algebraic differential equations, I mean, in the context of Colchin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, maybe to say why there, there might not have been as many points of contact as there otherwise were, because they're studying very particular order two equations, like just specific equations, the range of techniques that you use, like, that became central things in general, like say characteristic sets or Colchin polynomials, aren't as important once you fixate on a particular low order equation. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about analytic uh, yeah. possibility. Oh, right. And so they do, there are some analytic techniques employed, but they're really interested in algebraic okay. uh, conclusions. <coughs> yeah, like for instance, even, even papers of Rani that prove algebraic results use, I mean, what you might call analytic techniques, Laurent series and things like that. No, no, I, I don't mean the inside of the proof, I mean, yeah, the, for I the mean actually the transformation itself. Right, yeah, no, the conclusion, the transformations themselves would be algebraic. Okay, okay. Right. and so let me just say that, that here's an alternate, simpler, but much less in, I mean, if you don't, if you don't understand it, this could be very naive <laughs> to say, but we think we have some understanding. So. The, the idea is basically this. Classify the algebraic relations that might occur between solutions of Panleve equations in general. Okay. And by that you mean differential algebraic? Yeah, by that we mean differential. Okay. Um, why do you have rankings? Uh, oh, um, why does anyone have rankings? <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, um, all right, in one plan of attack, is to show that the Bachlin transformations essentially do this. And, and that's the plan of attack that I've suggested. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, so yeah, rankings, it's like, it's like, you, it's like I planted you to do my segue. Um, uh, so how did I get interested in this? Of course, I, I thought that Anand and Rani's work was very nice, but, um, and so I would have liked to, to, you know, to be involved in some way, but, um, but I came to it in this way. So there is a question of Poisson from the, um, from the early 80s, um, which says, so, suppose you take a definable set, and by that, for you, you can just have it be a differentially constructible set, then do, this model, do these model theoretic things, Lascar rank and Morley rank, coincide? And, um, okay, well, a long time later, Ryshovsky and Scanlon answered the question negatively. Um, and what they noticed was that Dave and Anand proved, could, could show that for sets definable over the constants, and um, they wrote empty set definable, that means definable over Q, but, but really it works over the constants of general, it doesn't matter. Um, which have order two. So for order two equations, the two ranks turned out to be the same. <coughs> and the examples that Tom and um, Udi produced, well, they all invi they involved order five or greater equations. And uh, so that's a gap of three. And um, one wants to know what happens. Who is interested in differential equations of order larger than two? Order larger than two. Yes. Well, I mean, so the, the, so the equations, let me note that the equations that they studied have real significance in number theory. Um, so the, the equations that produced the counterexample have, to, have, have deep connections to problems like the Mordell Lang and Mann and Mumford. So they're, I mean, specifically, they're looking at equations on the moduli space of principally polarized abelian varieties, and the equations they're looking at are Mann and kernels. 
Yeah, it's something deep to do with complex multiplication. Their paper is, is uh, not, so, I mean, you don't just pick it up and say, oh, here's the equation. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, but is, is it something artificial, you know, people create it? Uh, no, I mean, it's so kind of all of that is. I don't think so. I mean, it's the, the so the equations that they're studying are the culture and closure yeah. of the torsion points yeah. of an abelian variety. So, so it's something, no, uh, it's it's something from, created. it's something from numbers. So, so it's not second Newton, uh, Newton's law, okay? Okay, okay. It's something which, is, which may be artificial in the realm of physics or something like that, but I think it's very natural no, coming from number theory. I mean, it's a number theoretic example. Okay. So. Certainly, it would have three. That's a <coughs> Okay. So, doing two all right. After this, um, Rahim, Musa, and I proved that uh, for arbitrary equations of order two, you don't need to be defined over the constants. Laskar rank and Morley rank are the same. I won't say anything about the proof. It's, it involves a technical and complicated theorem that we proved. Um, How recent is this? Pardon me? How recent is this result of yours and Rahim's? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, I think we put a preprint on the archive uh, last fall. It's recent. Um, okay. Or maybe last spring, last year. Okay. Um, all right. So, so Neklu and Pillay had no, had claimed, and and their claim was. What rank is that? Yeah, I, I'll say in a moment. Okay. So, I'll I'll do it follows from. Oh, it follows from. But but that's a little subtle. Okay. So, so for order two, the ranks are the same. Um, and so Anand and Rani had claimed this. Now they they really didn't have to prove that because it was just followed from the, these lemmas in the Japanese papers. Uh, Umamura and Watanabe had, had proved this. Um, but and, uh, Jimmy, so it's equation of four to, five, uh, four to five, so how big is it? How big is what? The equation. Oh, it's very complicated because, because it involves the group law on an, uh, on an abelian surface. So, so what's the degree? Oh, the actual, they're, they're, they're not even sure of the order, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, the, the uh, uh, just five, yeah, at least, least five. five. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be five or six. Yeah, I mean, they weren't quite sure. I mean, they, they, I don't think they ever wrote down the equation. But, but that's possible. Just, they, uh, is it possible? That In principle, it's possible, but it would be difficult. Okay. Yes. I mean, even it's it's even okay. Of course, it's been done. It, you can write down the equation for the man kernel on an elliptic curve. But it's not easy. It's complicated. I mean, Bannon got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Is it uh, is it difficult conceptually or difficult as in just gruesome? I would say both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say both. Okay. Unfortunately, it turned out that that well, okay, just really differences in language made it so that um, what Anand and Rani noticed it actually wasn't quite right, but. It didn't affect the global structure of their paper, um, or their papers, luckily. Um, <clears throat> but if it had been right, okay, so we're living in a, in a pretend world here, but just go with me for a moment, then it would be really, really easy to see that, that the whole, the total family, panlobate, so the, so the set of the form x comma alpha, so that x is in P2 of alpha. So this is a, this is naturally, you could think of this as an order three equation, because this is order two over this, and this generically is, would be order one, right? This is x prime equals zero. This is from the constants, and this is an order two equation over that. So you could kind of think of this as a natural order three object. And if they had been right, then the ranks would, would disagree. And unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't correct. But oh. but um, and the reason that you could see that is because then the Morley rank, when you took this parameter, would be two, and the Morley rank when you took this parameter would be one, and that's exactly the kind of thing you have to have happen for the Morley rank to go up, but the Lascar rank to not go up. Okay, so I don't want to dwell on this because it's not so central, but, but it is connected to what I'm going to be saying. Jim, just one little thing. Uh huh. Could you go back to that? This, this is the same as the last two. Or is the last two? Does both. it have any connection with the vessel equation? Um, the 
the uh, yes, pages that right. Galois theory have Galois group uh -huh. SL2? Because that condition comes in in that case. Alpha is or isn't in a half plus Z. It, it's not clear. I mean, not I think clear. it's related to your question whether the uh, background transformation of or what's non orthogonal. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not clear. Yeah. Well, we'll get to some things that might um, in, be enlightening on this. Okay. So, um, all right. And so, unfortunately, it's not, um, it's not correct, but, but by, okay. So, again, I'm saying that I proved this, but really the, the huge amount of legwork was done by the, the mathematicians in this Japanese school, Umamura Watanabe and their collaborators. Um, and so, uh, and then, I mean, at first, I thought this was terrible because I thought that Rahim and I, uh, together with what Rani and Anand did, had resolved this question entirely of Udi and Tom's, uh, and that I wouldn't, and that, like, I didn't see what else to try to prove. So I just thought, oh, it's just like a counterexample, and it's boring. But then I started to prove things, and it became much more interesting <clears throat> to me. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So, um, so I was able to generalize some arguments of Rani's to show that the generic type there is trivial. So remember, they know when alpha is transcendental, they know something even stronger. They know what model theorists call disintegratedness. And Ronnie proved for all alpha, um, oh, I'm sorry, that should be <coughs> one half plus C. I'm sorry, I omitted the one half, <coughs> my fault. Um, so Ronnie had proved for all alpha not in one half plus C. It's a trivial equation, geometrically trivial. And, and I'm able to prove that for- Are for, saying you'll not only miss one half, but you also change it long to, to not long to there? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm saying that Ronnie proved the other case when alpha is not in one half oh, plus okay. C. Right. And I proved the case yeah. that alpha is in one half plus right. C. Right. Okay. All right. So, oh, so, so in, all, in all cases? Yeah, we know. So we have a. Com so the, the upshot is, like you say, we have a rather complete understanding of the geometry of Penlevé 2 from this. Not a complete understanding in the sense of my conjecture, but moving in that direction, I think. And we'll move farther in that direction. So the Z means uh, complex? Uh, we can replace Z to a complex? That's right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So the generic type of any Panlevé 2 equation mm -hmm. is, right. is geometrically trivial. That's right. So we have, that's what I mean. We have a rather complete understanding of the generic solutions of Panlevé 2 equations. OK. Again, complete. Not as strong as my conjecture, but strong. Okay, so, and I'm not going to mention it specifically because it gets complicated because the groups get more complicated, but I've proved similar things about Morley degree jumps on the other equations. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> all right. So, yeah, and again, at first I thought, ah, this is terrible because all I've done is ruin the answer to this question of Rashofsky and Scanlon, and I don't see how to prove anything more. But now I've seen how to prove some more things. And I'll, I'll sketch those proofs in the remaining time. So here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll answer the remaining cases of Bolch's question. And we'll prove that the Bachlet, the, ortho, the non orthogonality classes of Panlevé 2 equations, at least generically. And I'll explain precisely what I mean when I say at least generically in the coming slides. It's, so, it's somewhat subtle, but and, and the proof, I think, is, is interesting. Jim, just one more question about those mm -hmm. order five and, uh, and on. Mm -hmm. So, is it true that uh, uh, so even without knowing the equation, that uh, it cannot be reduced by a lower order equation to zero? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. A good question. The all the sort of qualitative theoretical properties like that that you mentioned are known, but. Uh, actual computational things seem very difficult. Mm -hmm. But it, it also may be just the bias of the people involved. I mean, the people involved are model theorists and we're terrible at computing. <laughs> could you, could you um, review what Morley degree means? Yeah, I will actually, oh, okay. in the coming, in the, in the proofs. Okay, but- I'm to say some, but uh, terrible at computing. Some are, some, okay. some are different. Oh yeah, because, because actually, I think Omar's quite good at computing. And other people. And, and other people too. Okay. <laughs> so, 
let's start. I'm going to start with number two because I actually think the proof there is is more is the most interesting. Okay. So I want to prove. So again, this is two. I want to prove that the Bakken transformations completely determine the, the non-orthogonality classes generically. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. I mean, suppose that you fix alpha transcendental. Then the, here's the question. When is P2 of alpha non-orthogonal to P2 of beta? When does that happen? And what I can prove is that it's if and only if they can be acted on by the group. Okay. If there, so specifically, that means there's an element of the group G, little tau, that takes alpha to beta. Okay. <clears throat> So I can only do that, though, assuming alpha is transcendental. And you'll see why in the proof. Okay? And I get similar but more complicated statements for all the other families besides Panlevé 6, although I think once um, Ronnie and I talk, we'll be able to prove it for Panlevé 6. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'm going to sketch this proof. Uh, uses lots of results of lots of people, Anand and Ronnie's class, these Bachman transformations. Results of Murata on algebraic solutions, um, geometric stability theory, it's a piece of model theory, and either ominimality or number theory, depending on what your taste is, we'll see. Okay, so first. So, 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 for question about that order five, where are the coefficients? Where are the coefficients yes. in what? In the order five equation? Yeah. Uh, in Tom and, and, uh, and Udi's case, I, I think that they lie in C of T out. Certainly, mm -hmm. like uh, they're in the algebraic closure of C of T, um, but they certainly are not constant. Yeah. Or um, maybe like the Panlevé equations, you you could no 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 I'm sorry that forget what I started. And is this more like the small thing that could lie in or or not? Yes, I think well. Okay, I don't, I don't want to commit to an answer, okay. to be honest. I'm, I'm so, if you don't mind, I ask a very trivial question, mm -hmm. uh, because I still haven't got the idea of non orthogonal well in mm -hmm. my head. So, according to this result, then uh, when alpha equals beta, or equal to minus beta, then they would be orthogonal. They would be non-orthogonal. They would be non-orthogonal. Right. Yeah, okay. because so, you could just take the same uh, yeah. point, and then... And then and then the equation, you know, so if this yeah, is x and this is y, and they're the same thing from the same equation, then the same thing, but yeah, then the, the line thing. x but equals y equation. is no, but from the same equation, no, same, from the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So this mm -hmm. is uh, if you think about this in terms of sub varieties. Yeah. Whenever you have two of the same differential variety, the diagonal is yeah. a sub variety of the mm -hmm. product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which doesn't come from a product of sub-varieties, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and also, so, so one more thing about that equation. Mm -hmm. So, so you right. mentioned that, that it comes that, from... That explains on also with pretty well. Something from number three. <laughs> yeah, it does. But, but okay. uh, be, being a counterexample, uh, does that help number anything on number three? Then? I, I would say that that hasn't been, that hasn't been extensively explored, but it, I think it certainly could. It, so the, na the nature of why it's a counterexample has to do with complex multiplication of abelian varieties. And um, maybe it could have something to do, it could not. I, in, in their work, it doesn't have some real thing, consequence or something, but it's plausible that it might. Okay, so, all right. <clears throat> so as I say, the hard case is when both of those are transcendental but they might satisfy some algebraic relation. Of course, you have to do all of the cases to do the proof, but I'm gonna explain the hard case, okay? So you have, to, you have to do the case that alpha is transcendental and beta is three, okay? But I'm not gonna do all of those cases, I'm just gonna do this case. So in this case, by Anand and Rani's work, we have that these two solution sets are what's called strictly disintegrated, so there can be no algebraic relations between solutions of P2 of alpha. Okay. And they also know something more by work of, this is really work of Murata, that there are no solutions in C of T alge. Okay. So there could be for other fibers. Okay, now some, some theorem from geometric stability theory, and this is just some, some piece of model theory, says that whenever we have this, then 
Well, actually, the non-orthogonality has to be has to be witnessed by some formula which doesn't use parameters from a differential extension field. It only uses things from Q of T together with the parameters we used in defining this. And this is really essential. This is the, the, this is the essential part, an essential part of the proof uses this, I'm treating as a black box from, from model theory. It's sort of like a descent result. And it says, Somehow, you have an algebraic relation out there over an extension field. Uh, actually, you have it over this smaller field. Okay? Yeah. So I can't, there's not, you couldn't explain why this is true in a single lecture. It's some, it's a deep result. Okay. So algebraic here means algebraic, not differential algebraic. Because they are constants, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Constant? Oh, alpha beta. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. So... Now, so in model theoretic terms, it means that this relation is given by a formula or a differential constructible set in these, in these parameters. Okay. Okay. Now, it's true that strict disintegratedness implies that this must be actually a bijection, not a finite to finite map, for the reason that Alice noticed before that if you take a point here and you had two points over here in the correspondence, well then these two points would be inter-algebraic with each other. And we know that that's, that doesn't happen by strict disintegratedness. What is strict disintegratedness? Mean? It means that all of the solutions to P2 of alpha are, are transcendental with each other. There are no algebraic relations between any solutions of P2. Any two. Any two over any field. Any two distinct. Any n. Any n, even. Yeah, any, any n, any n, any two, any two. Jim, when you move to the solution, alpha, beta are constant, so interalgebraically, mm -hmm. break is well defined. Yeah. You don't have to ask, is it different? You mean differential algebraic or algebraic? Right. When you move to the solution set. Yeah, then, then we mean differentially algebraic. But, but you don't, it doesn't come in here. Yeah, so we know that result. if there were if there were a differential exactly. algebraic right. correspondence, yeah. it would end up being a finite to finite correspondence. Okay. And that follows by the structural properties of the solution sets because they're strongly many. Okay. So I, I won't I'm not gonna dwell on that, but yes, you're right, there, there's a black box there. Well, okay. It's actually exactly the same reasoning you gave a moment ago yeah. for the interalgebraicity. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it weren't finite to finite, then you'd have a proper sub variety on one side via going that way and back. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now, by, some, by another model theoretic <coughs> property, which we call stable embeddedness, and that just, in, in differential algebras know what this means, it means that if you look at the constant field, you can't define anything new in the constant field except for what you can define with polynomial equations, <coughs> even in the Cartesian powers of the constant field. Okay. Polynomial or rational? Well, ra rational. <laughs> Um, it's not a group. Right. Okay. And so, by now, we know that on some Zariski open subset of the locus of alpha and beta over Q, remember, alpha and beta are transcendental, but they obey some polynomial relation. I'll call it P. Okay? So, on a Zariski open subset of that locus, we know that we have a bijection. That's actually more powerful than you think, because... C of T alge definable bijections. We know that we know the bijections definable over C of T alge because we have this model theoretic black box that gave it to us. Right? So we, we had this descent result, which said, could be that the algebraic relations defined somewhere off in space. Uh, no, actually it descends all the way to Q of T alpha beta. So that that's that's a deep result, which I'm not explained. Can you give an equivalent uh, differential algebraic proof of that? I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you could by analyzing. Uh, let me. See. I think you could by analyzing indiscernible sequences. Okay, uh, I won't want to say any more. Just going to sidetrack things. Okay, so now P two of alpha has algebraic solutions by 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 a beautiful theorem of Murata, if and only if alpha is in Z. Z or Z plus half. No Z. Z. Oh, yeah, this time. Yeah. So this is oh, this is where this story gets so strange yeah. because Pan-Lebesgue yeah. equations have these two loci. One loci where the Morley degree is strange, and one locus, and one, one set of loci where the algebraic relations are crazy. 
And, and this is essential in the proofs that I'll be yeah, hearing. Yeah, Morley okay. degree two, that's amazing. Really, can you give an example? What, for, uh, what alphas give you Morley degree two? Uh, alpha and one half plus C. Uh, okay. All of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now <laughs> let, let's take P to be, little P, to be that polynomial. Now, here's where we have some, we have, we have an insanely strong thing if you put all of this together. We have that for all but finitely many integers alpha, we must have that all of the solutions beta are integers, and vice versa. For all but finitely many beta, we must have all of the solutions alpha are integers. So in particular, P has infinitely many integral points. So I mean, oh, okay. this is such an embarrassingly strong condition on P that you should be able to prove, you should be able to completely characterize P. Of course you can. At first I started doing silly things.